Well, I am Saranya Ghosh, a third year student at MIT Manipal and this is the second video of the two part video series where I'll be telling you about the first year curriculum at any engineering college. I would highly recommend that you watch the first part of this video before proceeding with this one because in that I have explained a lot of things which I won't be repeating in this video so a lot of things that need context. With that being said, let's dive in. I had the physics cycle in my second semester. The first month of it was completely online. Then we were called to the campus and we got our first taste of offline classes. So a lot of this advice in this video is going to be really relevant because they're coming from personal experience and not from research that I had done because I didn't pay attention in classes in the first semester. In the second semester, again, you'll have six subjects and three labs. They'll be in the form of three full days and three half days because you always have theory classes and labs only three days of the week. First up among the theory classes, mechanics of solids. This is a subject offered by the civil department. It contains a lot of curriculum related to the 11th grade physics part, the mechanics portion to be specific. So stress, shear, couple, volume, momentum, fluid dynamics, etc. You get the point. I feel like this was the easiest out of all the core theory subjects because all of it was really logical. You could solve any problem just by making the free body diagram and solving the equations and you would arrive at the final answer. Even the syllabus wasn't huge. I got a C. That was because of my kind of decent internals. Well, not exactly decent. Decent would be something like 30 plus, but decent for that semester because I did not study at all. Try to solve more problems for this subject, especially pay attention in class when the teacher is doing numericals because very similar questions will come in your exam. Even if you don't want to make notes in class, at least write down all the numericals so that you can reference them at the end of the semester. The Ohm Xerox notes were also really helpful but I would recommend buying it in a bunch with two three other people makes no sense to buy a notes of 150 rupees per subject for just half a semester make friends buy it with them number two basic electronics this was offered by the ECE department it was a continuation of electronics that you'd studied in grade 12 building up on that knowledge with diodes op amps rectifiers amplifiers, a lot of boolean algebra, binary logic, flip-flops, latches, and so on. This is considered to be one of the most difficult subjects in physics cycle. I got an E. I almost did not pass. Like when I got out of the exam hall, I wasn't sure if I would pass or not. Make sure that you pay attention in class when it's being taught, especially if you have a good professor. You can ask your seniors if your professor is a good one or not, or you can even ask your friends for recordings of their their lectures if their professors are really good and they teach the material in a really simple manner. It's not really difficult per se, just requires a lot of practice. I know that my grade doesn't really prove the point, but I feel like B was made a lot easier because of being in a student project. In the task phase, I had to study a lot of these electronic based topics and make notes of them and answer questions in an interview. So in class instruction was more like a refresher. Again, problems are really important. You should know how to solve them. The slides or the reference textbooks are good sources for questions. They're good reference materials. Have a look at them and solve as many questions as possible. Number three, BME. BME stands for Basic Mechanical Engineering. It was a real interesting subject if you understood what was happening. You will love this if you're into cars or automobiles. It had everything related to boilers and then engines, so be it like steam engines, then petrol engines, diesel engines, four-stroke engine, two-stroke engine, and a lot of other things. Then there's the lathe and the machine tools that you use to shape all the objects into whatever shape they're supposed to be in. A lot of theory to be honest and so many diagrams. Like the ensign was full of diagrams. I don't remember even a single question not having a diagram to be drawn along with it. Study everything in this. Make sure you memorize those slides so well that you can print them in the exam hall. Again, solve numericals. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but numericals numericals are really important in all of these subjects. OSF was a really good source for all these numericals. If I remember correctly, there was an entire PDF of solved numericals and those exact questions, like not the exact question, like same 
pattern questions just with the numbers changed or with a slight twist in the concept they were asked in the exam they do have a lot of weightage in your finals so study them and make sure you know how to solve them number 4 engineering mathematics 2 i'm kind of disappointed that i got a b in this i was expecting an a but i kind of knew why my grade dropped while my ensem was excellent i knew everything on the question paper my internals were in great we used to have two 10 mark quizzes so in the second quiz i did a really dumb thing there was a sheet of paper with 20 questions on it each question about for worth half a mark and i saw that there were six questions on the first page and i did not think of turning it over and seeing if there were any more questions on the back yeah the last second when the teacher was collecting the papers i saw it i just stitched something randomly so i lost quite a few marks over there that may have been the reason why my grade dropped a little this was actually one of the only core courses that i liked apart from english i really liked the way that the instructor taught this subject as well and i in general like maths as well it's pure logic and concept no memorization at all we have a lot of topics like double integration triple integration to find the volume and the area vector calculus and some other lightweight topics at the end like series and sequences but this was also the subject that most people failed in it is always claimed that even semester maths is a lot more difficult than the odd semester maths about 2/3 of the batch got an f in this subject 1200 of them gave the makeups i'm not even sure how all of this was possible because our exams are all relatively graded all of us get graded on a bell curve so this is where it helps you if the exam went terribly for you there's a good chance that the exam went horribly for others as well because if the paper is tough it's tough for everyone so don't worry about failing or getting a bad grade relative grading might actually save you so it wasn't really a difficult subject for me but it clearly was for a lot of people so make sure you pay attention and pass it number 5 English. This is perhaps the class that I liked the most. Not because it was the easiest subject to score in, or it was only a two-credit subject. It was because there were ample opportunities to stand up in class, go on the stage in front of all your peers, deliver a speech, listen to other people's speeches, accept criticism, give other people public criticism that they could work on, present your opinions, and critically think about topics. As someone who really wanted to hone their public speaking skills, I feel like this class was a banger on that one. I'm really grateful that I had this class offline instead of having it online. Also, I liked it even more because I've always liked English, especially throughout high school. So from grades 9 to 12, I was heavily immersed in English. Even that is one of the reasons why I taken an ISC curriculum instead of switching to the CBSE curriculum like most people do when they're preparing for JE. The quality of literature that gets taught in the ISC curriculum is a lot higher than whatever is taught at the CBSE or the state boards level but since i was preparing for JE i couldn't devote a lot of my time to that subject so it was a breath of fresh air when i could read about a piece of text and think about it critically and give my opinions and analysis and objections i also got an a plus on this subject it's very difficult to get an a plus in anything and it still remains to be one of the only a pluses that i have ever got you have to be the best in that subject to get an a plus although i would have liked it more if i had gotten it in a four credit subject or a three credit subject to boost my cgpa but i'm not complaining number 6 engineering physics this is a subject offered by the physics department it includes all the chapters that you had at the end of 12th grade so semiconductors black body radiation a little bit of quantum physics quantum mechanics all the interesting stuff i remember there were a lot of derivations in the subject and some numericals I did not have a very easy time preparing for it during the ensem because it is a kind of subject that needs a little bit of time beforehand and I did not dedicate that. So make sure that you study the subject a little before time. I was kind of scared that I wouldn't pass in this subject but the grading was very lenient so I passed. Number 7 
engineering physics lab i absolutely love this lab in general science labs are so cool we got to do experiments on all the equipments and proved some simpler concepts like not simple concepts but proved them in a really simple manner with calculations and experiments and it was really cool it made me feel like an actual scientist this was again a regular evaluation lab if you think about it all labs in first year are regular evaluation ones before each lab you had to copy certain parts from the lab manual to the lab journal don't worry the professor will tell you beforehand what all needs to be written so you come to the lab you conduct the experiment whatever is assigned to your group on that day you write all the experiments you write the answers you write all the values you do all the calculations you also draw a graph if a graph needs to be drawn in that particular experiment and then you have to answer a viva there is a cheat sheet that exists for the viva if i find it i'll link it in the description if you want to answer all the questions correctly in the viva study the concept beforehand and think about all the questions that they could ask most of the common ones are like you know what is the utility of this equipment or where can this thing be used in real life then you will basically get a 9 or a 10 in every experiment in the ensem they give you one out of all the 12 experiments that you've done you have to already memorize everything that you've written in the journal and then come to the lab because you have to write the aim and the experiments or the equipment used and like the concept and the process and everything you have to have the entire thing memorized all the experiments by heart i think it was a combo of two questions like two separate experiments that you had to do i don't remember it correctly but what i do remember is nailing the ensem got all the experiments correct got all the values correct i remembered all the formulae all the things that need to be written got the viva almost completely correct except for one question even my sir was really happy he told me he was proud of me that's the only lab ensem that i have left with a smile on my face I was so happy I even rewarded myself with two chicken patties. Number 8 the workshop it is again another one credit lab and it has three parts to it the mechanical workshop the civil workshop and the electrical workshop you'll have the civil workshop where you can work on things hands on with like stuff it's actually really fun i think i enjoyed that workshop the most you get to be out on the field you can do measurements in the old school way with equipment that nobody has ever seen before i don't think they do it like that anymore so it's not essential civil engineering but a small introduction to it some tools that you might use to make measurements and observations even the mechanical workshop was really fun you got to cut things with a saw so like the reels that you see that people make fun of the workshop i actually really like the mechanical workshop as well you also got to solder things for yourself i soldered a rectangular box out of a flat iron or aluminum sheet. but that was really cool too i think it might have been my joint favorite workshop then there were demonstrations we actually didn't get to use the lathe or any of the more finer machine tools we were just observing from afar when the instructor was using them and showing us how they were used neither did we get to touch the motor engines and there's a car in the mechanical workshop as As well next i had the electronics workshop we designed circuits we also made a two switch like the stairway light bulb we made a calling bell like a doorbell that you see in most people's houses next last but not the least number 9 Engineering Graphics 2. This was in continuation to EG1 again offered by the mechanical department. Like I said in the previous video, built up on the concepts of EG1. You needed to pay attention in EG1 to understand what's happening in EG2. This time it got a little more difficult and a little more time consuming. It wasn't very long for us because it was conducted after the second semester's end sem, so in the one month that we had to stay back to finish all the first semester labs. At that time, labs were only of 2 hours so just the professor drew everything on the board we didn't draw anything in class all the assignments were take home all the sheets we had to draw in our rooms and then submit it for assessment which was golden for me i'll explain in a later video when i graduate because if this gets to someone in the administration they might not give me my degree this lab made me really annoyed with how labs were graded lab grades are a mix of both absolute and relative grading and they're very weird firstly you don't get to challenge them 
so you can appear for reval for all the theory subjects but you can't do the same for labs and second they don't tell you your nsem marks throughout the lab evaluations you'll always know all your marks even entering the nsem you'll know what your internal marks are and they just don't tell you your nsem marks at all and the thing that bugged me the most was i got a b in eg1 I was really struggling in EG1. I did not know how to answer any questions. It was bad. Me drawing questions in EG1 was like shooting a dart in the dark. I would copy other people's assignments by counting the number of blocks and then hoping that the line goes straight through them and then pray that the teacher doesn't notice that this line is like 10 degrees off. But for EG2 I solved like freaking 200 problems and I got a C. Not just this. I had coded for 4 years prior to entering college and in the PSUC lab I had one of my friends prepare for the NSEMs like no offense to her but she had never coded before I had helped her prepare for the NSEM and she got an A and guess what I got a B honestly what are the grading standards like how does a person who's never coded before who's never looked at a programming language before get a higher grade like I'm not saying that I am better than her but like it should hold for something right it makes no sense whatsoever next cpi i ran out of time in the last video so i couldn't tell about this thing called cpi in your year it might be under a different label for us it was something like creativity problem solving innovation it does not have a grade but make sure that you attend all the sessions and complete all the assignments it's online so everyone just logs in and leaves it has credits but no grades kind of like the open elective that you'll have in your higher semesters but just the difference is that in CPI we did not have an end sem in our coursework it says that in the fifth semester you will have an open elective but instead CPI was taken into account that is it for today this was my entire first year of academics at MIT my next video is going to be based on the second year engineering curriculum in MIT or just in any college in general but since it's going to be second year all the coursework becomes branch specific so all of it is going to be related only to computer science unfortunately because my branch is IT as always like share subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye